Permit me to first of all say a big thank you for, to the leadership for inviting me to come here today. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Is there anybody here who would like to be a leader? Can I see your hand? Everybody wants to be a leader. Everybody wants to be somebody. Everybody wants to make a difference. Everybody wants to stand out. But the truth of the matter is, it's not everybody that wants to be a leader that ends up becoming a leader. So my moment with you will inspire you to become leaders of inspiration. Permit me to celebrate members of my team that came with me, Mr. Olajide Orabusola. Please celebrate him. Chikodi Alamesaga, Mrs. Please celebrate. And of course, the man behind the cameras. <laughs> I want you to whisper to your neighbor and ask a question. Say, do you know who I am? If you know who I am today, you will buy me lunch tomorrow. <laughs> Inspiring leadership inspiring youth leadership nations of the world that have made progress there have been nations that have been committed to leadership development do you know that the american government spends 160 billion dollars to develop their young people every year to develop their leadership capacity every year in 2013 i had the honor to be invited by the American government based on my work. 23 of us were invited to America. And we were given the opportunity for one month to travel to different locations, interface with government officials, interface with top religious institutions, interface with leaders in the states, about four states that we visited, funded by the American government. And we realized that everything starts and ends in leadership. The quality of your leadership capital can take you far. The quality of the leadership capital that you have, your, the quality of your values is what drives you. Your leadership values can take you far. In church, everybody who wants to make a difference must grow in his leadership capital. The effectiveness of your leadership capital is what gives you a voice. Who wants a voice? Don't go for the voice, don't go for the recognition. What you should go for is developing your leadership skills. And therefore, today I will start from a segment of conversation that will take you as an individual where you are right now. You want to be outstanding, you want to make a difference in this country. First thing you need to do in my own calculation and thoughts is to develop what I call a learning system is to develop what I call four systems for leadership development that can make you a voice anywhere you are in the world. The concept I want to introduce to you today is a concept that is called live, live, that's to live, live, L-I-V-E. I want you to shout to live. To live. How many of you want, you want to live? Can I see your hand? You want to live? L-I-V-E is a concept that I design in making leadership teaching easy. The first thing you need to do as a leader is to understand the concept to live. What, is, what does it mean to live? You want to live, you want to make a difference, you want to become a voice, you have to learn how to live. So the first alphabet in that order is what is called the learning system. The learning what? System. It means that as an individual, the first code of conduct you want to create for yourself is to develop a learning system. Who can tell me what a learning system is? What is a learning system? It means that as an individual, the concept of learning becomes your second nature. It means that as an individual, even if you have graduated from school, you don't stop learning. Because the moment you stop learning, you start getting old. <laughs> have you seen a 20-year-old 
person before. He's 20, but his thinking is a cake. How many of you have seen people like that? You see somebody who is young, on top of his age, 23, and when he talks, he talks like a man who is still in the 1940s. Because a man who is 80 and is a learner is young. <laughs> so the life gives you a place not because of your age. Life gives you a place because of the quality of knowledge that you have. So understanding a learning system is what makes the difference. So what do you do as an individual, a young person that wants to make a difference? First thing you do is you create a learning system around you. There are elements of a learning system that is critical. Number one is knowledge. Number one is what? Knowledge. How many of you know that leadership flows to the one who knows? When you go to the boardroom, sir, you are in the boardroom having a conversation, the person who is leading the boardroom is not the board chairman most of the time. When there is a problem in the team, when there's a challenge, the person who always brings a solution to the problems is the leader. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Respect goes to the one who brings solutions. If you become a problem solver, people follow you. The day people stop following you, it means something is wrong. You have stopped being relevant. And without knowledge, you can't be relevant. How many of you know that even those who preach in the church, the reverend fathers that come and stand on the stage, that when they open their mouth, and you see scripture upon scripture, right? You see knowledge of the word coming out. Do you know that they have influence? Two of us. It is not as difficult to find out if somebody is empty or not. Because the empty vessels makes what? The loudest noise. If I want to know somebody who is empty, in five minutes, if you have a conversation with me, I'll tell you whether you know anything or not. In fact, how many of you for the last five years have read up to 200 books? Can I see your hand? 200 books. <laughs> Oga, you raise your hand. 200 books. Five books you have read and the authors. Can you name them quickly? Five books. He said what? <laughs> the art of seduction. Chine <laughs> Kemehe. <laughs> It's a great book, my brother. It's a great book. Please go ahead. Which other books? Five. Hey, whoa. I know where this man is coming from. Machiavelli. Yes. Oh, my friend, I want to advise you quickly. Those books, knock them out of your shelves. You've knocked them off. You are reading more new books. <laughs> Listen, listen, when they ask you to read a book, you should be very careful the kind of books you read. Because somebody will go and say, oh, Mr. Linus, you so should go and read books. He now goes and read how to commit suicide. <laughs> you go and read how to commit suicide. How to commit suicide? A, B, C, D of how to commit suicide. After reading the book, a spirit will tell you, move. <laughs> go. Go to the, <laughs> say go to the balcony. You move to the balcony. Eh? The next thing, say jump. <laughs> God forbid. That's not the kind of books I'm talking about. Listen, I ask a question. You are young people. You have time in your hands. For the last two, five years, two years, you have not read up to 200 books. Okay, 100 books. <laughs> okay, 50 books. Okay. 20 books. How can you, listen, listen to me. How can you become relevant in a world that is moving as fast as we can imagine if you do not gain mastery in the study? And it's a study to show yourself, approve as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth, even if it is the Bible. 
that you want to read, have you even read it? Knowledge. I was teaching some top directors of, of institutions in Nigeria, top level people, and I asked the same question. And I said, how many of you have read 50 books for the last two weeks, two years? No hands came up. Okay, I said 10. No hand came up. Five. Two. One person raised, I said, what are the, what are the titles of the book? He said, um, um, you know, I said, we're in trouble as a nation. For people who drive policy not to become learners and readers, it's a problem. Because if you don't read, how would you make progress? Knowledge is power. Knowledge. Knowledge. I was 19 years old when I floated my company, my organization in this country. 19. I was 19 years old. And I read biographies of powerful people in this country. And I traveled from school to meet with them. People like Mr. Gamaliel also they top-level boardroom gurus. And I invited them to my board. If I read about somebody who is outstanding, I go for him to reach out to him. With that knowledge, you are lost. Because if you're not form of, you're not very great at reading, one day you find a signboard in front of you that says that place is a dangerous place, kidnappers there. Because you're not used to reading, you will just pass by and you enter kidnappers there. A lot of people have found themselves in that state. Reading. Internet is before you. What are you doing with internet? Except on Facebook, somebody puts a whole bowl of apple and big soup and said, eating things. <laughs> and he will post it. Eh? Eating things. Somebody will be sleeping. Sleeping. And I don't know how he will take himself or a set picture of sleeping. And the next thing he posts on Facebook, sleeping things. So the village boys too no understand what is going on. In the village right now, when they are doing masquerade, they take masquerade thing as well and they post with their funny trousers, masquerade things. <laughs> so, so the real use of the internet is to improve your knowledge. How many hours do you browse? What do you ask Google? What questions do you ask Google? How can I become an effective leader? Ask Google, it will give you something. What are, they, what are the job opportunities that exist in Nigeria? Google will answer it. What are, they, what are the job opportunities that exist in, in China? Google will answer it. And somebody is here saying, I don't have a job. Somebody is saying, I don't know how to run my business. Meanwhile, every two hours, if you engage two hours every day asking Google questions, how do I start up a business? How do I make it to answer you? So what you are looking for in the south is right where you are. Knowledge is power. Number two is what I call the power of observation. 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 As a leader, one critical thing you must learn is to observe. When you walk into a room, what do you do? Observe. When you walk into an environment, what do you do? Observe. Observe. Learn how the details of what exists in your environment. When you get into somebody's office for the first time, you want to see the person. What do you do? Observe the person's face. Look at the person's face and know whether this person wants to talk or not. Sometimes you don't observe. You get into somebody's house carrying your bag and they receive you in the person's house. You're not observing the face, whether you are welcome or not, because a visitor stinks in three days. After three days, a visitor stinks, you don't know. You observe. When you learn how to observe, then you can learn from your environment. Do you know that security-wise, you can observe and you find out that somebody is tracing you? A lot of people don't observe. Learning system is observation. You observe your environment. In this conference right now, if I were you, I'll be observing. I want to observe who amongst us in this audience has something to give, even if he has not said a word. The way somebody is sitting in this audience can tell you whether the person is a leader or not. You don't know that. Eh? You see people go in public places, see the way they sit. <laughs> it 
in a public place. Somebody goes to the MD's office to see the MD. There are cameras all over the place. The person stays uh, and he's doing like this, sleeping in a public place. And sometimes they sleep and drop, see saliva in a public place. You don't know that in a bus, when you enter a bus, you're not supposed to sleep. You don't know that. You're supposed to open your eyes. Because you don't even know who is sitting beside you. Why would you be comfortable sleeping in a bus where you don't know who is sitting beside you? Have you met the person before? And you start sleeping. And then the next thing is that you are sleeping on top of the person. <laughs> don't you understand what I'm saying? Yes, These are things that our young people do. Eh? You have money in your, your purse. You start sleeping. And the person beside you, by the time you have slept 30 minutes, operation has happened. In fact, when there is an accident in such an environment, that's what happens is that a lot of people who are sleeping, they are the ones that are most affected. You know why? There's, suddenly, the guy might just, oh, I just jump the window. I'm telling you, observation is a learning tool. Observe your environment, observe your friends, observe everybody. When you observe your neighbor, you might know whether he's a kidnapper or not. There are neighbors that we have that are kidnappers who don't know because we don't observe. <laughs> Number three, reflection. Reflection. How many of us know that the power of reflection is the way, in fact, it was Plato who said, an unexamined life is not worth living at all. An unexamined life is not what? In Igbo, there's a proverb that says, about what so Megani? A go mile. <laughs> Do you understand that? You don't understand what that means. It means that when you run, after a while, what do you do? You measure the distance you have what? You have covered. Otherwise, it's possible that you are supposed to be going to Lagos and you are heading to Kaduna 360 degrees, a kilometer per hour. <laughs> Will you ever get to Lagos? What do you do? When you know you're going wrong, on the wrong direction? You stop. No, you don't turn, my friends. <laughs> Understand order. <laughs> How can you be driving? 360 degrees, the next thing you do is what? If you turn like that, 360 degrees, what happens to you? <laughs> People don't understand. That's why a lot of us don't understand. Somebody says, shut up. And you say, shut up, shut up. You have not even reflected immediately. How tall is this guy? <laughs> How hefty are his hands? Do you, you guys understand what I'm saying? Eh, so, you know, people do things that they don't have the capacity to think. Somebody comes from somewhere and says, you're not, you didn't do anything. Say, shut up your mouth. Are you crazy? And then as a young man who is supposed to quickly reflect on the situation, in fact, what is this? What's going on? Look around first. Are there people with him? Does he have guns in his pocket? Do you understand? Is he mad? Sometimes somebody might wear a suit, but he's mad. You don't know. <laughs> and then the moment he says, shut up, shut up, people are in public, you start saying, shut up, my friend, do you know who I am? He will teach you who you are in the next couple of minutes. <laughs> That's the point I'm trying to make, my friends. Observe, because if somebody does like that, shut up, shut up, what do I do? First thing first, I find a way of escape. Because I don't know who is beating the drum. I don't know where it's coming from. They do it these days, arm robbers. You know what they do to you? They come and they provoke you. And you come out of your car. It's a setup. So when they provoke you like that, one was knocking on my windscreen the other day. Ka -ka 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 -ka. Next thing was like, I zoomed off. I knew them. He wanted me to say, my friend, what is wrong with you? Reflection. Are they 50 50? <laughs> no, I'm serious. How many of you want to read one book per week? Per week. Can I see your hand? Per week. 
One, one book per week, good. How many of you want to do one book per month? Can I shock you? When you read one book, one godly book, one outstanding book, for once in a week, in one year, you have read how many books? You don't even know your math. 52 books. When you see a man who has read 52 books for one week and has read it for five years, when that man opens his mouth to talk, you will see the difference. You don't know? Those of you who are not married, huh? they say, before you, before as a member of a church, you find somebody, you are mature, you find somebody you want to marry in church. Every day, you, because you don't have knowledge, the person is passing. The next thing you do, you pass, you say, sister, hi. <laughs> <laughs> sister, hi. Every day, sister, hi. <laughs> eh? The sister is wondering what is happening to this guy. One day she will say, don't greet me again. And the day you are ready, somebody has moved. The world is dynamic. Speed. Speed. Decision. Speed. <laughs> when I married my wife, what are you talking about? I met her in a public place, a shopping mall in Lagos. And within the few seconds I met with her, I heard her talk. <laughs> I have defined, listen, listen, if a man does have a purpose of waking up, sleeping becomes interesting. Yes. Eh? When you have a vision, it, it helps you to begin to plan. And you know, your spouse will be like this. I opt, I even knew I planned, writing it down, the way she would, her height, the way she would look, her hair, everything. I had already planned it, and I prayed for it. And when I saw her, I didn't waste time. Sharp, sharp. <laughs> all of you, all you need to do is eat sharp, sharp food. Indomie. This one is talk sharp, sharp. Straight to the point. Network. Pop, pop, pop. Listen, that's the way the world is going. Listen, knowledge is critical. And so what I did today is that I said to myself, what I'm going to do here today is that I will challenge you. And I came with my books. I said to you, you know, I'll give you 10 books. I'll give you 10 books that I think they are quality books you should read once a month. Right? Those, let's start from there, isn't it? And, and my own book, I challenge you. When you read my book and you write an executive summary of what you have read, all right? I normally give this competition out. The best executive summary that comes from here, that individual I will mentor personally. And before the end of the year, that individual will speak on one of my platforms. That's what I do. I am not here for theories, practical. Number two is that you must understand what we call integrity systems integrity systems Chaplain, integrity systems are is what helps people define who they are integrity system is there anybody here that you have met a liar before if you know somebody who's a liar you know beyond every reasonable doubt that this guy is a liar can i see your hand have you met anybody like that <laughs> is there anybody in this hall today that before you came to this program eh, <laughs> people have referred you as a liar you are seated in this hall they know you are a liar the, pro the problem with that is that you have not defined your integrity systems to define your integrity systems means that number one you are somebody that wants to be relevant in society. You want to be a leader that counts. So from your church, people know that whenever you open your mouth and say, I will be there at 3 o'clock, what does it mean? By 3 o'clock, they find you. What happens is that you build reliability and credibility over time. When you borrow somebody's money, what do you do? 
I've seen people in the same church. Somebody says, brother, can you please borrow me 1,500 naira? I will return it on Monday, 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> For three months, sir. The same amount of money is in this course. How many of you have witnessed that? You have one year. You have one. You have four years. <laughs> How many of you have experienced a teller's hatred for you? Teller. You, as a business, you were to attend a wedding on Saturday. And the, 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 the teller says, by Thursday, unfailingly, your, your material, your cloth to be ready. And meanwhile, you have designed how you're going to rock this thing on Saturday. <laughs> on Thursday came, you boldly with confidence <laughs> to see your tailor. And you got there, you saw something that looks like your material. <laughs> Untouched. Or sometimes they pieces it. And you ask what is going on. The thing tells you, in fact, tomorrow night, I will sleep throughout this. Tomorrow night you have it. Trust me. I swear to God, as they do it. You say, okay, <laughs> don't disappoint me. Oh. <laughs> don't disappoint me. Oh. And on Friday night, you came, nothing has happened. Your joy spoiled. The next day, dis disturbed. Have you seen that situation before? How does it look? Don't you see why businesses fail? Don't you see why organizations collapse? Because the moment you, people know you as a liar, you don't keep to your word, you lose credibility, that's what it is. There are people in this country who earn money in companies, they don't belong, that's they earn money in companies they don't have any shares in those companies, but what is going on for them is that they have a good name. So they earn 10 million every month, every, every year, 100 million. Because somebody wants to invest in Nigeria and they mention their names, that these people are men of integrity. If your brand is associated with their name, what happens? You don't want to be like that. You don't want to be like that. So it's not money that you need. How many of you think you need money to succeed in life? It's not money that you need. Money is not anything. Money is not anything, my friend. <laughs> my brother, I speak for one hour and I get a million naira. Can you hear me? I speak for one hour and I get what? One? One guinea? One guinea? One million? Why? My name. Perception is everything. You don't know that? What people perceive you to be is everything. When it's a consistent behavior pattern over time that forms your brand. What is your brand? If your brand is a lie, this man lies a lot. <laughs> it's difficult to. So people can tell in church, that guy, don't trust him. So are we making up our minds that now we will develop what to call our reliability factor, our honesty factor, our trustworthiness? That is what makes our integrity systems. How many of you want to go with me on that? My integrity system must be up. Can I see your hand? Those who are not raising their hands, you've not made up your mind yet, have enough time to think through it. Tonight, my assignment for you tonight, when you get home, can you design your personal integrity system and make a decision, ask God to help you, that you want to be a person of honor. Being honorable is one of the most important things that can keep you going. Even they give you one billion naira to tell a lie, you say, I cannot tell a lie, I have an integrity system. That's a leader. That's how to be an effective leader. That's how to be an outstanding leader. Number three, of the systems I'm talking about is the vision system. What did I say? 
vision system. How many of us have heard about the man they call Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Ahmad who? <laughs> How many of us have heard about him? Can I repeat that again? Sheikh Mohammed Rashid bin Ahmad who? Does this sound gua gua? How many of you have heard about him? If you have ever read, heard about, you've heard about him. Who is he? Huh? I didn't hear you. Put your hands together for that man. In fact, Oga, come, 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 my bank. I want to bless you. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. This is reward for knowledge. Hmm? This is for your pork. Look at that man, he has earned. He has earned money. Huh? And meanwhile, this book is all over the place. The power of vision is all over the place. If you, as your car is moving in town, you see somebody spreading the book everywhere. This man is the crown ruler of Dubai and the vice president of United Arab Emirates. How many of you have been to Dubai before? You have been to Dubai? Okay. <laughs> I wish that in, in, before the year runs out, a lot of you will be in Dubai. Yeah. Amen. If you follow what I'm telling you, <laughs> there's a condition for everything. Now, this man said, he said something very powerful that blew my mind. You know what he said? This man said, the path to pioneering and success is only open to the serious and dedicated persons towards progress. It means that anybody who wants to amount to anything must pioneer something outstanding. What does that mean? That the foundation of effective leadership is the capacity to dream is the capacity to what? Dream. To have a vision. To have a vision. To have a vision. Do you have a clear vision for your life right now as an individual? Do you have a clear vision for your church, for your department in church? Is your vision clear? When they give you a task to do in church, do you design a vision around it or you just do anything you want to do? Let's say they appoint you to conduct a task. Do you sit down with your team and create a vision and say, in the next six months, one year, this is what you want to accomplish? Without a vision, the people what? Perish. Nigeria is where it is as a nation because we don't have a national vision. I hope you know that. There's no national ideology that frames this country together. So people do whatever they want to do. They want to get into power most of the time to steal money. That's their vision. Some of us want to make money by all means. It's no vision. At age 19, I started this organization to groom leaders that will change this country. 23 years after, as I'm talking to you, we have just acquired seven hectares of land beside the lake in Uguta to set up the first African leadership center in this country. So president, people elected into office, they go straight to my center in, in, in Uguta Lake. That's where they learn leadership to help them grow, become leaders. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because it is your vision, the quality of your vision that makes you restless. Does that make sense? That's why I said if a man doesn't have a purpose of waking up, sleeping becomes interesting. If you don't have anywhere to go in the morning, what happens to you? You sleep. Some of you sleep until 11 a.m. in the morning. That tells you this man doesn't have a vision. And I want to make a point here. Have you ever seen people who walk like this? What's up, man? Have you seen them before? When they ask that question, what's up, man? What does it mean? They don't know what's up. <laughs> they don't know what's up. And that's why those kind of guys, see them on the they get into their father's car at 42. Listen, at your father's car at 42. And then they are blasting the music. You see them. 
church. You know that kind of songs. And they reach towards Nikon Transcorp Hilton. Another purposeless lady is standing beside that. <laughs> and she, they stop the car and they quickly ask, hey, young lady, how are you? Say, cool. Say, say, hop in, hop in. And then she goes, she hops in. <laughs> no direction, no purpose, what the, no vision, two visionless people, crazy. Where do they go to? Four people, come. Let me show you something. Four volunteers. Give me four volunteers. Five. He said, come. Let me show you something. Come. Let me show you something. Five of you, please line up here. <laughs> line up here. Oga, you stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Correct. Turn. You turn. Turn like this. <laughs> Oga, turn like this. Oga, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Open your eyes, but don't say a word. Wherever these people go, follow them. Does that make sense? <laughs> now, close your eyes. When you hear my voice, eh? When you hear my voice, come to me wherever I am. But don't open your eyes. I hear in Nigeria, cheating is a reckless action. Please, don't allow that to be proved here. Do you understand? So, so, all right. So when you hear my voice, come. Okay. Come to me. Stay there, stay there. Stay there. <laughs> my friends, my friends, stay where you are. <laughs> Look at, let me tell you, in real life situations, sir, this is what happens. Confusion. Leadership by guesswork. Tombo, tombo, boss, calabasi, like how can you make progress? That's how they have led this country all these years. That's how. So if a man wakes up in the morning, he doesn't have a vision, he goes with twin stick till 11 o'clock in the morning in the street. A young man, everywhere, round, every day, round, 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 he returns back to the home. Progress. No progress. One spot. So. <laughs> I beg, I beg, I beg you. If I go sit down, I beg you. Thank you. You must have a clear vision. Your vision must be clear. Look into your heart and bring out your vision and shock the world with it. And you stay at it, clarify it. Let sound values be along your vision, that's all. And then finally, you must have an enterprising system. It is when the vision is clear that you begin to walk towards the vision. Is that not true? When a man sets goals and the goals are clear, you begin to walk towards the goal. You cannot become outstanding until you build a vision for yourself. To tell you what I'm talking about, because a lot of people don't like, like vision, that's why they don't learn. Last year, something shocked me around June. I went to Harvard University to go and attend the act and practice of leadership. And 62 of us, top leaders from around the world, came to Harvard to learn leadership. And we paid thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. What are you talking about? You're talking about more than 10 million naira to pay for one course. <laughs> to pay for what? And I entered the classroom. I got the shock of my life. The whole of the class, white, 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 white skin, 11 from Australia. Some came from Singapore, some came from Brazil, top nations of the world, Canada. Only two came from Africa. One from Morocco and one from where? Nigeria. Nigeria. And yet, the biggest leadership deficit is in Africa. And yet, we complain about it and we don't do anything about it. How many of you here have taken a course, you went to go and pay money to attend a course for three days, four days, to, to develop yourself. Can I see your hand? How many of you? How many of you? Those of you who have not done so, you should start crying. 
because I'm telling you, start crying. You know what it is there is that this one hour is not enough to share. Does that make sense? Yes. That's why you have to develop yourself by yourself and become restless because you want to achieve your goals. That's called enterprising person, hardworking person, excellent person, serious minded person, breaking the boundaries. You move to one place, they say you are not going to enter. What do you do? You go back again and do what? And come back, re strategize and come back. Eh? They wale you somewhere. What do you do? You go back again and do what? Come back. You want to be an effective leader? If you do these four things I've told you about my friends, you'll become an effective leader that will make a difference in this country. I want you to rise and say after me. Rise and say after me. I want you to say, mention your name, say I. I make up my mind to be an effective leader that will change this institution. I will become an influence in my church. This church will grow because of me. My voice will be heard in church. I will serve with all my heart. When I have done my service in church, I will go to the marketplace and make my mark. I will leave my name a legacy for posterity. When my name is mentioned, people will thank God because of me. So help me God. Put it together for yourself. Two assignments I'm going to leave with you. Number one, on Monday at the leadership center in Meitama, we'll be having a leadership session that will last for one year, every month, every week, you learn for free. Does that make sense? How many of you are interested in anything like that? In Meitama? So all you need to do is, OVO, where's OVO? Where's OVO? Please, all you need to do is, this man will take all your names and we, are, we will admit you for that program. Does that make sense? Yes. Because I'm a practical person. You know what it's called? I don't need theory. I do what? 